All right, let's look at doing the third angle orthographic projection of this, um, this isometric over here. Uh, just whenever you start these questions, please read the question very, very carefully so that you know what you actually are asked to do. It says the given figure shows a pictorial view of the model. There it is. Uh, draw to the scale one is to one. Very important. Underline that so that you've really got that in your head. A third angle orthograph projection of the following views of the model. The front view, the top view, and the right view. Insert the following on the drawing, five dimensions. All hidden detail and center lines show a title, a scale, and projection symbol in the spaces provided. Right. When you start this, please write the title. The title is a model. The scale, please write out the word scale and one is to one. And there's your projection symbol showing the left view of the cone. All right, we're going to be looking at doing a third angle orthograph projection of the isometric view. Read the question very carefully. It says given figure of the model shown as a pictorial view. They say draw to scale one is to one. Make sure that you are drawing to the right scale and check which views they are wanting you to draw. It says a front view, a top view, and a right view. Over here they say they want five dimensions. All hidden detail must be shown and show the title, the scale, and the projection symbol. Whenever you start one of these drawings, start by doing the title, the scale, and that projection symbol. It's a whole bunch of marks which you really don't want to lose. Okay, when you are doing this in grade nine, they normally give you a front view and they expect you to start with the front view. On this particular drawing, I'm not going to be starting on the front view, and the reason being is that uh, I can see circles happening on the right view of this object. So I'm going to start by drawing this right view rather, and then I'll be able to project more accurately across to get my front view. How do I go about doing that? Well, I'm going to start out here. I'm going to draw a little construction line going over there, and I'm going to draw a little construction line over here, and I'm going to measure across, they say it's 12 plus 36. Okay, so my 36 plus 12 plus 12 is equal to 60. Okay, so a measure of 60 millimeters. 60 millimeters over here. And I can straight away get an idea as to the width of the object. I'm going to find the center of it by drawing a construction line coming from that corner, a construction line coming from that corner, and straight away I have found the center of where I need to draw. Draw a center line in, long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash, long dash, doesn't matter how long you make that. Um, it says here that I have got a diameter here of 36. What is the radius if it's 36? You've got 18, okay, so I measure off 18 millimeters with my pair of compasses. Measure off 18 millimeters, 18 millimeter radius. Place it at that construction line where the construction line meets that center line. Make a little mark there, and you can straight away draw in a circle with that radius of 18, giving me a diameter of 36. Note, I already know what that diameter is, so they've asked me to do dimensions on this drawing. Put the dimension in straight away. Take a line going across the center, carry it on out a little bit, put some arrowheads on there, put an arrowhead on there, take your ruler, draw a little line coming out there, draw a construction line, or construction line, draw in that little symbol for diameter, and it is 36. Straight away, I've got an extra mark, and I know that I've got that in the right place. I'm not having to search for that diameter anymore or anything like that. Right, the next circle that they ask you to draw is a 24, that is a 12 millimeter radius. Set your pair of compasses to 12, or you can use your circle stencil. Go into that center again and draw in your 12 millimeter radius, giving me a circle with a diameter of 24. Straight away, put in your diameter, put the little arrows on, 
arrow on there, line coming across over here, draw a little construction line above it, another little construction line, put in that diameter symbol, and write in 24. You've got two marks for your dimensions so far. Don't lose those marks. Right, continuing on. Um, it says that I come down from that center. Okay, let's just draw that center line in as well. I should have done that already. Long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash, long dash. Going across there. You get marks for the center line, so don't forget those. It says that I come down 42 millimeters from that center. Measure off 42 millimeters. Come to that center. Mark that off. And... Draw a line going straight the way across. I'll show you why I'm drawing a line going all the way across. Can you see this line over here? And it's down at that level of 42. Okay. Um, right. It then says that I come down uh, 6 millimeters and 12 millimeters from there. Take your pair of dividers. Measure off 6 millimeters. 6 millimeters there. Measure off another 12 millimeters. 12 millimeters there. Just draw some construction lines over here. I'm just going to use an orange crayon over here. Construction line coming across there. Construction line coming across there. <coughs> right, you'll see that um, they've asked you to have 12 millimeters over there. Note this thing, this dimension over here is 12 millimeters. That dimension over there is 12 millimeters. I've got that corner over there. There's 12 millimeters from that corner up to there. If I take my 45 degree set square and I draw a little line going at 45 degrees like that and a construction line coming down at 45 degrees like that, you'll note that that distance over there is the same as that distance over there. So I'm not, I'm not having to measure 12 millimeters. I've already got an accurate 12 millimeter measurement in the drawing which I can use. It then says I've got lines coming straight up to that orange line over there, line coming up there, line going across from there to there, and a line going up to there, and a line going up to there. Right, once I've got that, you can see that there are lines going up to that circle which are making tangents to that circle. So I need to take my set square, I'm going to Put that on that corner over there, and I'm going to slide it down until it just touches the circle and draw a tangent line to that circle. Same story on this side. Place it on that corner, slide it across until it just touches the circle, and draw a tangent line coming down to that corner over there. Right, the last thing that we need to draw is this little 12 millimeter story in the center. That is six millimeters on either side of my center line. Take six millimeters, place it at that center line, make a mark, make a mark, and I can draw in this story over here, that line over there, and that line over there. And that is my right view completed on this drawing. Continuing with this drawing, I've now done my right view. I now need to draw my front view, okay? Um, let me just find these heights on your left view, I mean your right view, you have got your heights of the object which I can then transfer across very easily from, from the drawing. Note over there, I'm not at the base of the circle there, I'm uh, slightly higher because that piece over there is not touching there, it's touching slightly higher. Take the center line coming across over here, take the insides of this across, and take the top going all the way across. Right, once I've got all those lines in place, um, I'm going to start my object just slightly away from, the, uh, from this line that they drew there. I don't actually like it when they draw those lines in, but they have. Right, let's have a look. It goes up from there to there. Um, it says that it goes across 12 millimeters. 
Measure off 12 millimeters, come in over here. Measure off 12 millimeters over there. Just gonna make a little V over there just to make, <coughs> make it clearer to myself. <coughs> oh dear. <coughs> All right. <laughs> oh dear. No, don't do that. Um, okay, measure 48 millimeters across from there. 48 millimeters. There's my next little, I'm just making little V's so that you can see them. Please don't put little V's on yours. It says 12 millimeters again. 12 millimeters over there. Put that in. And another 12 millimeters after that over there. And that would give me the end of the object. Right, so I can draw in a line coming down over here. I can draw in a line going all the way across from there to there. I can draw in a line going all the way across from there to there. I then come over here and I say, okay, where is, uh, where is this going? It's going right to the top over there. So that line goes straight the way to the top of this thing. That's the very back of this thing that I've just drawn. It then comes forward. Uh, let's just see, where does it come forward to? Do they tell you? Hmm, ah, 36, there you go, 36 millimeters over there. Measure off 36 millimeters. 36 millimeters over there. Smack that in over there. Drawing that down to that point over there. Okay. I can draw in a line going from there down to there. I can draw in a line going across. Sorry, I need to draw in this little line coming up here, which stops at that point over there, and a line going over there. I want you to see where this tangent is. Can you see that point over there? I'm going to take that across over here, and I'm going to continue this line over here up to where that tangent is over there. Right, I can draw the top of this over there. I can draw hidden detail over here for the hole that is going through this. I can draw hidden detail over there for the hole that is going through this thing over there. Right, once I've got that, there's also a hidden detail line over there. And most importantly, please don't forget your center line. Those center lines, to me, are the most important drawings on, uh, the most important lines on that whole drawing. Right, there we go, that is your front view done. Uh, and I've asked you to put in this measurement of 48 over here. Take a line one millimeter away from that point over there. One millimeter away from that point over there. Draw a line over here. It should be about 10 millimeters away from there. Draw in your arrowheads. Your arrowheads. One millimeter up from there. Construction line. Construction line. Right in 48 over there. Right, that's three dimensions done. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to link these two views to get that top view. The way that we do that, you can see that there's this 45 degree line over here. And I'm going to take a line coming up from here to that 45 degree line over there, a line up from the edge over there, and I can now take that across over there. That's the base that I just took up to that 45 degree line. I have the base over here, I can take that up, and I can take that up over there, and straight away I could draw in the base of the object on here. There we go. Right, um, there is a channel going through this base. Let me take those up. Take a line coming from there, all the way up. From there, going all the way up and draw a line coming across and a line coming across and I can now put hidden detail over here. 
showing that little channel going through the base of this thing. Right, once I've got that, um, let's have a look at drawing the cylinder part of this thing. I'm going to take a line coming up over here. Let me use a different color. Line coming up from the cylinder, from the back of the cylinder. There is the edge of the cylinder over there. Let's take that up over there. Edge of the cylinder coming up over there. See where it touches the 45, take that across over there. See where it touches the 45, take that across over there. I've got the front of the cylinder, which I will draw in straight away. There it is, going across. Um, it goes back to this tangent thing over here. So I'm going to take that tangent story up over there, and it goes back to that point over there. Taking that back to there. Taking that back to there. Pardon the interruption for end of day notices. A reminder about talent showcase. Tickets for tomorrow night's performance. All right, continuing here, you can see the back of the whole cylinder and everything over there. I can draw a line going right from there. That's the back of the cylinder and those two slopey sides coming down. You'll see that there is another little slopey side coming up to that point over there. I need to know where to stop it on this drawing over here. There it is on this drawing over here. I'm going to use a different color, I think, just to try and highlight where I'm getting this information from. I'm going to take this blue crayon over here. I'm going to take a line up to that 45 degree line over there. I'm going to take that blue line going across from that 45 degree line over there. And that point over there is where I can draw a line for that slopey side over there. Okay, and then the same story over here. The slopey side touching over there. I'm going to take a line from that point going up, touching over there. Line over there, coming across over here. And I need to draw in a line going from there to there. Right, you can see that little extra bit of line sticking in there, little extra line sticking in there. Right, once I've got that, I've got the inside of this thing, the inside uh, hole going through. And I take that, I take that across and that across over there. I can put my hidden detail in quickly. Hidden detail coming from the back of that cylinder story. Hidden detail coming from the back of the cylinder story over here. And of course, I also need a center line coming up over here. There's my center line coming up to that 45, going across over there. Long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash, long dash over there. Um, right, once you've done all of that, um, the last thing that you need to do on this thing is to get this little um, part over here. I'm going to take a line coming up from where that slope hits that platform part and take lines coming up from there, take a line coming up from there, and I can now take those lines across into my drawing from there. And there, and I have got hidden detail coming from this point over here, going into a solid line coming across to that line, hidden detail coming across here, and a solid line. And now I can draw in that little part showing the bottom of that slope, okay? Um, I also need some hidden detail coming across over here um, and some hidden detail coming across over here. And that is the top view completed.